Good morning and welcome to News at 10 on Rajya Sabha TV. I am Ashwarya Kapoor. Well, President's rule has been imposed in Arunachal Pradesh. The Supreme Court will today hear Congress's plea challenging Cabinet's recommendation to that. Well, that is the big story we'll be looking at. Also in the big international focus, now Denmark has approved a controversial migrant assets bill. We'll get you all the details on that and much more. But first up, the headlines. President gives assent to central rule in Arunachal Pradesh. Congress and other opposition parties call it a murder of democracy. Supreme Court to hear petition challenging cabinet decision today. Call for nationwide universities strike today to protest suicide of Dalit research scholar Rohit Vemula. Seven students on hunger strike at Hyderabad Central University seeking ouster of the vice chancellor. Maharashtra Chief Minister urges temple authorities of Shani Chinapur to hold a dialogue with women's group campaigning for entry of a female devotees. This after activists were taken into preventive custody and later released following clashes with police. Denmark's parliament clears the decision to confiscate valuables of refugees to deter them from entering country. Refugees call step dehumanizing. And Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says UN chief statement on settlement activities bolstered terrorism. Ban Ki-moon had called Israeli action provocative. First, the big story that we are looking at. President Pranam Mukherjee has given his assent to central rule in Arunachal Pradesh. Now, the nod was given two days after the union cabinet's recommendation. Now, the Congress and other opposition parties have termed the move a murder of democracy. Today, the Supreme Court will hear the Congress's plea challenging the Cabinet recommendation. Two days after the Union Cabinet recommended imposition of President's rule in Arunachal Pradesh, President Pranam Mukherjee gave his assent to the recommendation on Republic Day. The President had earlier called Home Minister Rajanath Singh and sought clarification on the urgency for imposing central rule. The Centre has maintained that it was forced to take the decision because of a constitutional breakdown in the state. And this is not uh, the creation of the central government. The state government, which is the Congress party, they have failed to govern the state. And the chief minister has dropped all his senior ministers and parliamentary secretaries without, uh, you know, uh, consulting us. A delegation of Congress party leaders had also met the president and opposed the cabinet recommendation. After the presidential assent, the Congress and other opposition parties, including the JDU, the CPI and the Aam Aadmi Party, are terming it a murder of democracy. BJP wants that everywhere their government should come. Uh, you can't uh, impose president rule because people have not favoured you. So it is very wrong. And we'll fight in the court and also we are going to fight on this. स्टेट विल गो टू द पीपल ये गैर भाजपाई जो विपक्षी दलों की सरकार है उनके लिए खतरे का चिन्ह है केंद्र की सरकार ने वही काम किया जो पहले जिसकी वो हमेशा निंदा करते थे क्योंकि ये शुरुआत है भारतीय जनता पार्टी की ओर से कि पिछले दरवाजे से सत्ता में कैसे आना है Six months had lapsed between two sessions of the state assembly. This is the chief minister of Nabam Tuki and speaker Nabam Rivia. In both of the cousin brothers, in this day, we have to see this day. This is very unfortunate. This president rule, in fact, was very early in October and November. This is the crisis of October and November. This is the crisis of the minority. वहाँ कानून चीज के कोई नहीं है, डेवलपमेंट चीज के कुछ नहीं है, वहाँ पूरा खत्म हो गया, लॉ एंड ऑर्डर प्रॉब्लम पूरा वहाँ हो रखा है। Meanwhile, the Supreme Court will today hear the Congress plea challenging the cabinet decision. It was expected that they will by forcefully they will do it. It was expected they did it, and then it is of course not wise decisions for the state of Arunachal Pradesh, and ultimately our people people will be sufferer. 
Former Delhi Police Commissioner Y.S. Badwal and retired I.S. Officer G.S. Patnaik have been appointed advisors to the Arunachal Pradesh Governor after it was brought under President's rule. Arunachal Pradesh has been rocked by a political crisis since December 16 last year when 21 rebel Congress MLAs joined hands with 11 of BJP and two independents to impeach Assembly Speaker Nabam Rebia at a makeshift venue. The Speaker had termed the move illegal and unconstitutional. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi has called a meeting of his Council of Ministers today to seek a midterm review of all the decisions taken by the Cabinet in the last one and a half years of the NDA government. Now Modi will examine how ministries are implementing over 20 key decisions on agriculture and rural development projects. This will be the first major review exercise in 18 months since he assumed office. Now the meeting has set off a speculation that there could be a Cabinet reshuffle during the budget session of Parliament. Modi had last met his team in December last year when he had asked all the ministers to travel across the country and spread awareness about the government's development measures. And in other news, now the situation in Hyderabad Central University continues to remain tense. Now, despite some peace on the Republic Day, the agitating students are going to escalate their protest with a call for a nationwide university's strike today to press for action on uh, Rohit Vemula's suicide. Now, the strike is uh, to be extended to a Delhi Chalo on 30th of January, which happens to be the deceased student's birthday. Republic Day brought temporary peace at the Hyderabad Central University. After the week that saw frayed tempers and protests over the suicide of Dalit scholar Rohit Vemula. Acting Vice Chancellor Vipin Srivastava hoisted the national flag at the campus, hoping that this would be the precursor to finding a solution to the logjam. However, the students are not placated. Representatives of nine universities forming a national joint action committee has given a call for a shutdown of universities across the country today. This is to be escalated to a Delhi Chalo on 30th of January, Mahatma Gandhi's death anniversary and Vemula's birthday. Seven students are already on an indefinite hunger strike. They are demanding the sacking of HRD Minister Smriti Irani, arrest of Labour Minister Bandaru Dattatreya and Vice Chancellor Appa Rao Pudail. In solidarity with uh, the people sitting on the hunger strike, uh, come se come, the least we can do is we can uh, leave a meal. So I decided that at least I will not take lunch. Even today, there is no uh, response from the administrative side and there is no response from the government side. And they are uh, shedding crocodile tears toward the uh, Rohit's death. Following demands of the students, the university has revoked suspension of other students and announced an ex gratia of 8 lakh rupees to Vemula's family. But the agitating students have not accepted the appointment of Professor Srivastav as acting VC. The protest has already taken political colours. On Tuesday, the Telangana Pradesh Congress Committee handed over a cheque of 5 lakh rupees to Rohit's mother, Radhika. The party has threatened to take the issue to Parliament. The Vice Chancellor and the two Central Ministers must be sacked. The SCST case, the concern must be arrested and uh, they must get an eminent distinguished person as the Vice Chancellor of the uh, Central University. Jab tak Sri Apparao Upkulpati aur Sri Dattatre Mantri ke virudh darj FIR ke aadhar par koi karvai nahi hoti wahaan ke chhatron ke aandolan ko Rohit Vemula, along with four other Dalit scholars, was suspended for an altercation with the student leader of the ABVP. Rohit later committed suicide on 17th of January. University authorities are concerned the academic semester could be disrupted if it did not begin functioning soon. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, apart uh, from that a nationwide university strike, a uh, look at what else is expected to make uh, news through the day. Let's take a look in the day ahead. A five-judge constitution bench of the Supreme Court will hear a plea in the Aadhaar case today. The petitioners in the case had challenged the unique identification number on the grounds that the move to collect information from individuals and sharing such data is a violation of the right to, uh, to privacy, especially in the absence of any backing regulation.
the municipal sanitation workers in New Delhi will go on an indefinite strike from today. They charge that the civic bodies have failed to meet their many demands, including the regularization of their salaries. The workers have been sitting on a relay hunger strike for the past one month at Jantar Mantar under various unions. The Delhi High Court is to hear a plea challenging the AAP government's decision to set up a commission of inquiry to probe the alleged corruption in the DDCA. A division bench of Chief Justice Ajay Rohini and Justice Jayant Nath said that it would hear the plea today. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav will visit the drought hit Bundel Khan region to take stock of the development work. Yadav will be travelling to Shah Jahanpur village and hold Chopal with these villagers and also meet public representatives. Now hit by uh, severe drought conditions, a farmer death is reported every third day from the 13 districts that comprise that region. While the government estimates 40 to 60 farmers deaths last year, locals claim that the number is at least 10 times higher. News from Maharashtra now. Well, the state government there has said that it will facilitate talks between the women activists and the authorities of the Shani in Shingnapur temple to find a way out over the ban on entry of female deputies into the inner sanctum of the shrine. On Tuesday, the police took hundreds of women activists into preventive custody when they tried to march to the temple to enter the inner sanctum. The women activists led by Trupti Desai staged a sit-in protest and clashed with the police as they were prevented from entering the temple. जितनी ऐसे मंदिरे हैं जहाँ पे महिलाओं को प्रवेश वर्जित है वहाँ पे जो है वो जल्द से जल्द वहाँ पे महिलाओं को छोड़ना चाहिए यही हमारी मांग रहेगी और हर रोज चार महिलाएं अभी शनि शिंगनापुर में जाएगी so those are the visuals uh, of a women being taken into preventive custody. Uh, remember, these women had uh, tried to enter the temple uh, and uh, they wanted uh, the ban on the entry of female uh, devotees to be lifted. And a high alert has been sounded in Orisha after four men presented themselves as Iraqi nationals and they disappeared when asked to produce their identity proof at a hotel in Bhubaneswar. The police suspect them to be terrorists. The four men, with an estimated height of 6.5 feet and speaking in Hindi and English, came to the hotel at, in a car with a Delhi registration number, which turned out to be fake. Now, the police have seized the CCTV footage from the hotel. The special task force has started an investigation into the incident and has launched an operation to trace the four men. The team searched different hotels and lodges to locate the missing suspected terrorists. <laughs> कार का नंबर दिल्ली से वेरीफाई किया गया तो वो फेक नंबर जान पड़ता है उस नंबर की इस तरह की कोई आईकॉन फोर्ड कार वहाँ पे नहीं रजिस्टर हुई है रात को पुलिस को हमने हाई अलर्ट पे रखा पेट्रोलिंग बढ़ा दी गई मैं उनको दो बार पासपोर्ट मांगा वो बोल रहे थे बहुत बार बोल रहे थे कि महामैं well, this is Raja Subha TV. We'll take a very short break here. We'll be right back. Keep watching. The present government is being projected as, as a reflexive anti-Dalit government. I, I think that kind of a criticism is uh, inspired by those who are not comfortable with the present government. The politics in Jammu and Kashmir, why do we see a an intriguing political silence at the moment, both on the part of BJP as well as uh, PDP. So there is an English proverb that we'll cross the bridge when we reach it. Let the party first choose its leader, the PDP is yet to choose. Watch to the point with Minister of State for Prime Minister's Office, Dr. D.P. Indra Singh, only on Rajya Sabha Television.
Welcome back. Now, cold wave conditions prevailed in the entire North Indian region with minimum temperatures falling several notches below normal. Not just a cold, a thick fog also affected normal life. Now, train services were the worst hit. The unusual cold weather pattern disrupted normal life in the East Asian Peninsula. Winds travelling from the northwestern plains increased the chill factor in North India as the country celebrated Republic Day. Bone-chilling icy winds have disrupted normal life, sending shivers all around. In the hills, the minimum temperature is hovering at freezing point in the lower areas, while higher areas are reeling under temperatures as low as minus 10 to minus 12 degrees Celsius. As many as eight deaths have been reported in the past couple of days due to the intense cold wave in Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal. Jammu too experienced its coldest night in 70 years at 0.05 degrees Celsius. This time, the cold is very much seen, and the cold is very much seen. Hands, hands, pair, girl, are seen, and so even in the morning, the cold was very much seen. Work in the morning, hands are cold, and very cold, the hands are cold. Yes, warm clothes, 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 warm clothes. A thick blanket of fog engulfing the entire northern region has brought down visibility to 200 meters in Delhi. Flights and train services are also badly hit, with as many as 45 Delhi-bound trains cancelled and 30 delayed, while seven are rescheduled. Not just India, the entire East Asian Peninsula is reeling under a severe and unusual cold weather pattern. This rare weather pattern has specially proven deadly for Taiwan, where 65 people have died due to the cold. Heavy snowfall in Japan has stranded motorists, delayed bullet trains and caused flight cancellations. The southern city of Guangzhou in China, which has a humid subtropical climate, saw snow for the first time since 1967. In South Korea, temperatures in the capital Seoul fell to minus 14 degrees Celsius, the lowest since 2001. On Saturday, Jeju Island received 4.7 inches of snow, the heaviest since 1984. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well now, let's get to the big international story. The parliament in Denmark has cleared a controversial bill that seeks to deter refugees from entering the country. Now, the jewellery bill that is being termed by refugees as dehumanising allows the Danish police to confiscate valuables of those seeking refuge in the country to pay for their stay. Despite protests from international human rights organizations, Denmark's parliament has passed tough measures aimed at deterring refugees from seeking asylum in the country. This includes confiscating their valuables to pay for their stay. The Danish government has defended this measure despite strong criticism from the opposition. Denmark vores del, når det handler om, om flygtninge i Europa. Absolut vores del. Og, og det er jo heller ikke nogen hemmelighed, at når vi står her i dag, så er det jo rent faktisk, fordi at vi ønsker at komme til at tage... Det er jo i bund og grund en skamplet for Danmark, og det kommer jo til at, at få en meget, meget negativ indvirkning på, på vores omdømme. Altså Danmark var jo, da jeg var ung, så var jo kendt som et, et, et lille humanistisk land, der altid gik for. The tough measures also include delaying family reunification to three years. The move has been criticized by refugees who call it wrong and dehumanizing. It's, 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 a wrong, it's a wrong law and we don't accept this. We condemn it. We want the Danish, the Danish uh, parliament to, uh, to think again about this uh, new law because uh, th uh, this, is, this, is, this is dehumanizing. The United Nations says that the move sends out a damaging message decision um, to give Danish police the authority to search and confiscate valuables from asylum seekers um, uh, sends damaging messages in our view. It runs the risk of fueling sentiments of fear and discrimination rather than promoting solidarity with people in need of protection. Um, on the limited access to family reunification, uh, we just remind people of the point that um, family unity is a fundamental principle in international law. The jewellery bill is the latest attempt by Denmark's seven-month-old minority centre-right government to curb immigration to a country that took in a record 20,000 refugees last year. Bureau report, Rajasabha TV.
Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has dismissed remarks by UN Secretary General Ban Ki Moon against Israeli settlement activities. Netanyahu said that a ban's remarks only bolster terrorism. Earlier on Tuesday, UN Secretary General had slammed Israel's settlement activities as provocative acts that raise questions about its uh, commitment to a two-state solution amid growing Palestinian frustration of uh, nearly 50 years of occupation. And news from the Middle East now, well, the much-awaited Syria peace talks might restart on Friday. Well, the United Nations is making all-out efforts to secure a broad ceasefire in the wanton country. Meanwhile, the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry dismissed reports that he threatened to stop support to the Syrian opposition if they did not turn up for the talks. Here is more. The first priority will be the focus of the talks of what most Syrians, if not all, want to hear. The possibility of a broad ceasefire and the possibility of stopping the threat of ISIL. The United Nations making a push to restart the postponed Syria peace talks. The Geneva communique will be the guideline for the talks. It was issued after a UN-backed conference on Syria held on June 30, 2012, laid down a roadmap for power transition in Syria. Everything is uh, starting with the Geneva communique, what we have on 2254, which lays down very clearly three areas, governance, new constitution and new elections under UN supervision is a further refinement and more precise of what could be the umbrella of, of the Geneva communique. The UN has finalized the list of delegates on behalf of the Syrian government and the opposition. However, the head of the Syrian opposition is not optimistic about the upcoming talks, casting further doubt on whether the group will attend the Friday meeting in Geneva. Meanwhile, the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said they will support the opposition politically, financially and militarily. He also dismissed reports that he threatened to halt support to the opposition if they do not show up for the talks. Russia remains adamant on its stand on Syria as it reiterated that their military intervention had altered the ground situation in the war-torn country. Действия воздушно-космических сил России в ответ на обращение сирийского правительства реально помогли переломить ситуацию в этой стране, помогли обеспечить сужение контролируемого террористами пространства. The Syria peace talks were set to begin in Geneva on Monday, but it got delayed because of the ongoing discussions on who should represent the opposition. On the ground, the situation remains grave. At least 22 people were killed in a twin bomb attack in Syrian government-controlled city of Homs. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And some more international news and updates now in World Wrap. Myanmar and the China Energy Engineering Corporation inked a contract of adding the new electric generating sets to a power station in the southeast of Myanmar's Mon State on Tuesday. This is Myanmar's first project funded by the World Bank in 30 years. Funded by the country's first major loan from the World Bank in 30 years, the new sets will generate pollution-free electricity with higher efficiency and lower consumption of natural gas to about a billion Burmese people in the region. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi met with his Afghan counterpart Salahuddin Rabbani on Tuesday in Beijing and pledged to enhance bilateral counter-terror cooperation. Both the leaders also called for resumption of peace talks between Afghanistan and the Taliban. Rabbani is on a four-day visit to China to boost bilateral ties at the invitation of Wang. This is the first high-level visit between China and Afghanistan this year and also Rabbani's first trip as Afghan Foreign Minister.
Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras defended his unpopular pension reforms plans, pledging to avoid new cuts to overhaul the country's pension systems on Tuesday. Amid escalating protests against the measures, Tsipras said that the country had no choice but to reform a system which had created chronic deficits and would collapse if left unchanged. The opposition, however, accused Tsipras of fooling the Greeks. In the latest move to ease the embargo on the island in nation Cuba, the United States announced the lifting of export payment, financing restrictions and also facilitating air travel to the country on Tuesday. The amendments will remove restrictions on payment and financing terms for authorized exports and re-exports to Cuba of items other than agricultural items. The changes will also facilitate uh, travel to Cuba by allowing uh, block space, uh, co-chairing and leasing arrangements with Cuban airlines. The amendments will take effect from today. To sports now and world number one women's doubles pair of Sanya Mirza and Martina Hingis will face 13 seeds Julia Georges and Carolina Pliskova yeah, in the semi-final of the Australian Open today. The Indus Swiss pair defeated German-American pair of Anna Lena Groenfeld and Coco van der Beek 6-2-4-6-6-1 in the quarter-final clash extending their winning streak to 34 matches. Sanya Mirza also advanced to the mixed doubles quarters with Croatian partner Ivan Dodik the top seeds uh, shook off the challenger from uh, Asamul Hakkureshi and Yaroslava Shvedova 7-5, 6-2 to set up his last eight clash against Leander Pace and Martina Hingis. The Indo-Swiss pair had a comfortable 6-1, uh, 6-2 six six victory over Jean-Julien Roger and Sloane Stephens. In the men's singles, uh, British number one Andy Murray is in action against Spain's uh, David Ferrer in the quarter-final clash on Tuesday, Swiss uh, Mastro. Roger Federer advanced to his 12th Australian Open semi-final and set up an exciting semi-final clash against world number one Novak Djokovic. Federer beat Berdic 7-6, 6-2, 6-4, while five times the winner Djokovic brushed aside Japanese Zaki Nishikori 6-3, 6-2, 6-4. <laughs> and in the women's draw, Britain's Johanna Conta continued her remarkable run after straight sets win over China's Zhang Choi in the quarterfinals. And the unseeded 24-year-old won 6-4, 6-1 to become the first British woman to reach a Grand Slam semi-final since 1983 on Tuesday. Also, world number one Serena Williams continued her domination after she beat Maria Sharapova 6-4, 6-1 to reach the semi-finals. She will face uh, Poland's Agnieszka Radwanska in the last four. Well, that's all in this news bulletin. News and updates continue on your channel. Thanks so much for your time.